Hi, you know, I've always had a fascination with crystals. Uh, as a PhD chemist, I used to make them every day. I mean, I don't mean make quartz, uh, but I, we used to make, you know, take chemical compounds, a variety of different types of, of compounds, and, and you can coax them into forming really almost clear in many cases and coloured uh, crystals. It's a purification technique used in organic chemistry, which is what I did my my, my PhD in. But I thought, you know, I, I'd share with you what I think are four really fascinating uh, facts uh, about quartz and, and crystals uh, in, in general. Do you know, years ago, we used to keep, keep time using the steady tick of a pendulum arm. But now, what we use is something called the piezoelectric effect. It's when you pass an electric current from a watch battery or a clock battery through a tiny wee bit of quartz and it vibrates exactly 32,768 times per second. Isn't that amazing? It vibrates exactly. And it's that absolute precision of 32,768 vibrations per second that allows us to keep accurate time. And that's why if many watches or clocks that you see will say quartz on them, and what the quartz is referring to is the fact that the time is kept by a tiny wee slither of quartz that vibrates exactly 32,768 times a second. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Uh, the second thing that I think is really cool is optical fibres. You know, optical fibres are what we use in our telephone lines. I mean, years ago it used to be metal, I think copper it was maybe, uh, and, and broadband used to initially be in phone lines and then it was, you know, metal wires. Now it's fibre optics and that means it, they actually start out as silicate or silicon dioxide, which is, the ex which is pretty much what quartz is made of, silicon dioxide, and it's melted at high temperature. And as it's cooling, they pull it into, engineers pull it into really, really tiny, tiny wee thin fibres, about the thickness of a human hair. And they have this property that's called total internal reflection. Now what that means is, let's say this was a wee bit of an optical fibre magnified up. It means as light is coming through it, 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 it bounces inside the, the fibre. It goes bing, 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 and it doesn't go out of it. And that's what total internal reflection means. It reflects internally, totally internally inside of it, and you don't lose any out of it, which means you, we can efficiently transmit information through these fibre optics or these optical uh, fibres. And the fact that light travels so fast, get this, 300 million metres per second. That's how fast light travels. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, so, so that's why we call it high speed internet and high speed telecommunications. And it's all made possible because of silicon dioxide, which is, well, quartz essentially. Um, so that's the second really fascinating uh, thing I think fascinating about crystals. Now the third thing uh, I think is really fascinating is the Earth's magnetic field protects us protect all life on Earth, actually, from harmful cosmic rays. So cosmic rays come in from the sun and from, you know, different parts of the galaxy. And if it wasn't for our magnetic field, they would get right through and they can be very, very damaging and harmful to life. So the fact that life is here and has survived millions of years is in large part thanks to the fact we have a magnetic field. Now, why does that matter? Well, now, in fact, here's another thing. You've probably seen the, mag the Earth's magnetic field. If you've ever uh, been far enough north, you know, you often see them in Scandinavia, Iceland, even northern Canada, sometimes a wee bit. Yeah, also in the southern hemisphere as, as well, you know, very, very tips or, or end, ends of, of the land. Uh, and, and what happens is we call them the, the southern lights rather than the northern lights, but uh, I've only ever seen the northern lights. Uh, and and you, you see these little waves of green and blue, kind of aquamarine and stuff. And what that actually is, is these charged particles coming down, hitting the Earth's magnetic field and go, you know, like, like rain on a tin roof, going, and it goes, and it bounces off the Earth's magnetic field. And that's what you're seeing, is the northern lights and the southern lights, the aurora borealis and Australia borealis, I think that's what it is. Uh, what you're seeing is these cosmic rays bouncing off like rain on a tin roof, going, and bouncing off, and that's what you see. That's what the northern and the southern lights uh, actually are. But get this, scientists for years wondered, where does the Earth's magnetic field come from? I mean, how does it actually generate? Because it's always up for debate. Now, some breakthrough research at the Tokyo Institute of Technology a couple of years ago uh, suggested that it, it, it seemed quite likely that it's actually the formation of quartz close to the Earth's core that powers it. Isn't that amazing? So what happens? The Earth's core is mostly molten iron. It's absolutely roasting, roasting hot, and the iron is liquidised. 
Uh, but it's not just iron in the core because it also contains like silicon and oxygen and carbon and a few other ingredients. And, and what happens is that heat begins to rise from the centre and that pushes some of the lighter things like, like silicon and oxygen are much lighter than iron. And it pushes them up like that. And as they push up, they begin to crystallise into quartz. And, and literally quartz is just the crystallisation of molten, what is essentially molten rock or magma. It's the same stuff that spouts out of a volcano, uh, but it's really, really deep down and it crystallises into quartz and then some other things begin to fall down and then they melt and come back up again and you get this little convection thing and it's believed now that that's actually, this crystallisation of quartz is actually what's powering the Earth's magnetic field. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it absolutely blows me away. The fact that we are here on Earth today because quartz forms inside the, the, the main body of the earth, it crystallises into its silicon dioxide, silicon and oxygen come together and crystallise into quartz in, as it moves out of the centre of the earth and that's why we're here today, because that produces a magnetic field that protects us from cosmic rays. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so fourth thing, I was going to tell you four things, Wasn't a four, what's the fourth thing I was going to share with you? Um, oh aye, aye, so earthquakes occur when two plates on, and the Earth's crust slip against each other, they go and they slip and grind. Uh, and that's what an earthquake is, you know, you've probably, you know, that shaking of the ground, that's just crustal plates going Crustal plates are like, you know, if you look at uh, a football and you see these regular hexagons, so the Earth's crust is a bit like that, except it's not regular hexagons, they're all different shapes, but they're called, they're called crustal plates. Uh, and they're essentially floating. <laughs> the, earth, the earth is molten, you know, so they're essentially floating over the surface. Over millions of years, sometimes they float apart, which is why Africa and South America look the same. You know, if you cut them out, you could stick them together. A nice wee exercise for kids. And you'll see that, you'll learn that millions and millions of years ago, Africa and South America were actually joined, but through what's called plate tectonics, the movement of these crustal plates on the molten magma, they gradually drift apart. And, and so nowadays th you have thousands of miles separating Africa from uh, South America. But when these plates grind against each other, they go, and they slip sometimes, and that's what we feel with the ground shaking during an earthquake. But as you know, you've seen it in the movies, that you end up with big tears in the ground and, and that's also underneath. And now how does the earth heal those tears, those wounds if you will? Well, it turns out as the molten rock is coming up into those into those cuts if you will, those tears in the, in the earth's crust, millions and millions of little quartz crystals begin to form inside the cut. And as they, they form out of the molten rock, they crystallise solid into solid quartz like that. They crystallise solid and it literally binds and it holds the cut together like internal sutures, like, you know, stitches healing a wound. Isn't that absolutely amazing that it's the crystallisation of quartz in the, the, a cut in the earth's crust and that literally heals uh, the wound. Isn't that amazing? I, I love these kind of things. I, oh, as I say, for many reasons, I've always had a real fascination with crystals. I just thought I'd share some of that fascination uh, with you today. So uh, I'm Dr. David Hamilton. I'm a scientist. Have a nice day.